So thank you for being here today, Esme Patterson. We just listened to some of your new songs of your upcoming album, and I'm really excited because I'm really enchanted by the storytelling and the melodies and everything just goes together so well. Thank you. So thank you for having us listen to a little sneak peek today. That was um, fun. Yeah, can we also, can we tell the title of the album yet or not? Absolutely. It's called There Will Come Soft Rains. Cool. So one single already dropped. Yep. Right? So when's the, the next one, one going to drop? The next one's mid-January. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, I want to start this interview off by asking you how you are. <laughs> oh, I'm good. I just <laughs> flew into New York last night and I'm kind of getting my bearings, but I really love it here. Yeah. Have you been to New York often already to perform and everything? Mm-hmm. What's your favorite spot in the city? This is kind of cliche, but I love Central Park. Mm -hmm. It really feels magical and like you're in a movie, kind of. <laughs> Very true. So your fourth solo album is coming out in 2020, um, and we won't spoil anything, but if you could describe kind of the evolution from your first album to this album now in just a few words. Sure. Um, I started off a more kind of folk Americana vein, and I've been transitioning with each album to a more electronic and synth kind of heavy but still the core of it is the songwriting mm. it's just dressed a little differently <laughs> I like that metaphor that's really nice yeah I think you really tell stories with your music what inspires you to these stories thank you um, the inspiration touch points for me on this album the title is from a uh, Ray Bradbury short story from his science fiction uh, master work called The Martian Chronicles. Mm. And I was kind of just trying to think about society and where it's going and what we imagine and the kind of friction between the past and the future and just going through these cycles of creation and destruction in my own life and trying to generalize those ideas and make them more universal. Mm. So while it's still deeply personal, I, I was hoping that it would be relatable and large enough to hold the feelings of all the listeners too. Mm. So it's almost kind of the next step from your last album that was very personal and now you're kind of zooming out, having yeah. like the bigger picture of like society and societal issues and all of that right yeah so I feel like since women to women people kind of put you in this category of being like a feminist artist <laughs> does this category and the stereotype sometimes put the pressure on you to live to that role to live up to that role or to kind of fulfill it that's a great question um, I am so honored and happy to be able to represent a female voice in public and I I think that that's so Help been so helpful for me to see representation in public, and I am happy to be that for other people as well. Mm. But cool. um, yeah, <laughs> no, Sorry. no, I get it. Yeah, it's a difficult it, question. It's, it's too. strange because just being a woman speaking about your experiences, people put you in this framework of being a feminist. Mm. Whereas a man talking about their experiences, they don't say that you're, you know, a, a masculinity enthusiast. <laughs> exactly. You know, it's a weird double standard, so yeah. I've kind of tried to push against that and not be pigeonholed in that way, but I'm mm. also very happy to represent feminism as well. Yeah. I just, I think that feminism should be inclusive and not anti-male. I anti -male, agree. And it's just about us all being equal. equal. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I fully agree with <laughs> and you so on I that. think when people are like, oh, you're a feminist artist, that kind of is limiting mm, in yeah, some ways. You're I agree. like, yes, I'm also a feminist, but my music is. I think categories is more broad. I hope. <laughs> I fully yeah, and I think that categories are just limiting as there are right totally. so um your last albums had really kind of like an overarching theme will the new album also have that kind of theme and if so can you uh already tell us what it's going to be 
Um, it's really more of just that theme I was telling you about of kind of a science fiction futurism that's also nostalgic and also just taking these personal intimate experiences and trying to make them universal in a way where I just imagine that I'm my songs are a house that I'm building and then I want the listener to come come into the house and furnish it with mm. their own experiences and their own feelings. So beautiful. I just tried to make a space that was inviting mm. for people to come into musically. <laughs> <laughs> that makes any sense. That makes a lot of sense. I think you just see the world in a very poetic way and it's beautiful to witness that and to kind of be able to to listen to that too. So now that we got everyone excited for your new album, I want to play a little game with you that is called BMG Album Trivia. It's really easy because it's just about your own music. And I'll give you basically three hints to what song I'm referring to. And then you guess what song I'm talking about. Oh my gosh. And then I'll ask you a question. It's, it's going to be easy. <laughs> cool. I'm not making it too hard for you. And also these hints are kind of like my interpretation of what I feel when I hear your song. So just keep that in mind. It's subjective, you know. That's so cool. All right, cool. So um, in this song, the lyrics, you mention things that you can't do. That's the first tip. And it personifies nature by giving it kind of human characteristics. And That's so cool. Do you know what I'm talking uh, yeah, about? Yeah, it, it's no river. Yeah, right? exactly, exactly. Um, so what's something that you never thought you could do and now you're really great at it? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I mean, I hesitate to say that I'm great at anything. <laughs> I'm a lifelong learner, hopefully. But I all of a sudden people started telling me my guitar playing was good, where I never really set out to be a guitar player. <laughs> I've just been playing guitar for mm -hmm. a long enough time now that I people say, oh, you're really good. And I'm like, no, I'm not. I've never had any lessons. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> but Self-taught. But I love cool. to play, and it's so satisfying. But I guess I never really aimed to to be a guitar player, mm. quote unquote, you yeah. know what I mean? But yeah. just sticking with it long enough, I've fallen in love with it in That's a way. That's really cool. Yeah. And I think when I heard that song, it kind of reminded me of how much we can do and sometimes we just don't believe in it or we just don't know we can, right? Absolutely. So what's your tip for someone who thinks like there's some impossible task in front of them, but they, they actually can do it? Oh, I mean, yeah, I am scared of everything all the time I, I feel <laughs> nervous but I just push myself to to move through that feeling and I try to remember that courage isn't not being afraid ever mm. it's just feeling that and and moving through it and that's helped me do a lot of things I thought I couldn't do where I would just be like, I don't know what I'm doing, and I can't do this, and I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> and now can you and sit, just sit still like a mountain? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. In meditation. Yeah. <laughs> so the next song um, reminded me of the fact that, kind of what we were just talking about, that I have everything what I need inside of me. And it kind of talks about looking within. And some, another great tip is it's called This Lovely Story is Wrapped Up in a Melody. So that's how lots of your lines go. Something is wrapped up in something else. Oh, uh, is it Guadalupe? Yes. Oh gosh, how cool. <laughs> yep. Wow, this is trippy. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So do you think that our world would be kind of a more peaceful world if we taught children from the beginning that they, ha they can look inside and find whatever they need, the love, the peace, the power, mm. just inside. Oh, I love that. That's so beautiful. I, I, I think so. That's, I've found that to be true in, in my own life, that sometimes if you feel like there's something missing internally, uh, you know, and you're searching for it everywhere outside, it's, it's usually a piece that needs to come together internally. Um, Mm, it's just th that song actually was part of a weird project I did where I wrote songs based on different bodies of water. Mm, wow. And that Guadalupe song was about the Gulf of Mexico mm, and wow. how the water is kind of surrounded by the land. And 
Guadalupe, the um, kind of goddess of Mesoamerica, mm -hmm. you know, um, is wrapped in her starry cloak. And just that idea of being like held and surrounded mm. by your own body. That's like true. Your spirit is being held And we're by water you. and we're, that's so true. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> so and it was like a interesting kind of parallels for, for me. That's really cool. And that's where that song came from. So the next song, when I listened to it, I kind of had to think of this Buddhist saying that no mud, no lotus. Um, because I feel like humans, just like lotus flowers, sometimes have to struggle to then actually become this beautiful flower. Um, and at the same time, the song also suggests that it is important to go through pain and feel something wrong to mm. know what's right. Ah, sure. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's the song feel right exactly sure. that's so, so cool. what was the mud that you had to struggle through like some really hard struggle that made you become the person that you are now if you want to share that with us at all oh gosh i mean i could go on about a lot of things but that that song particularly i was um trying to understand a way to talk to people who were racists about <laughs> why that doesn't make any sense <laughs> and so I was trying to like boil everything down to mm. the most essential level of saying something you know doesn't feel right no one wants to feel that way like trying to it was really just an exercise in empathy building mm, wow. that song and trying to really break it down for hoping mm -hmm. to understand different opposing groups of people could try to understand each other and say mm -hmm. like no one wants to feel something that doesn't feel right like wow. that happens to all of us let's boil it down to like the core of our experiences so that we realize that we're all human beings wow i love that that layer <laughs> to it and i didn't even know because i think what you're saying is that also communication between opposing you know mindsets and views is so important and i fully agree with that and i think that we all need to kind of step out of our comfort zone sometimes because sometimes when I see someone who is a racist I'm like I don't even want to engage you know but then I ask myself I'm also now in my bubble and I'm not open you know so I have to try to talk to that person and and maybe who knows maybe you might be able to get through to them exactly it's worth a try so this next song talks about being drawn to something um, and it kind of talks about the fact that sometimes what you're drawn to or what you love isn't really good for you. <laughs> and then in the worst case, you might burn yourself. <laughs> oh, this is a moth song. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so do you have a guilty pleasure, something that like you always go back to even though you know um, it's not good, quote unquote? Uh, probably so many. <laughs> um, lots of lots of guilty pleasures but th yeah that that song was a specifically about a guy hmm. you know and yeah guys like can be guilty pleasures those, too <laughs> like romantic things where you're like i know this isn't good for me but mm. i kind of it's already happening and it's too late <laughs> yeah yeah that's that same thing of like your intuition is telling you something and you're just like i'm nope. already floating down the river <laughs> So the next song is talking about being alone in big crowds and it also addresses death um, and I already mentioned the title in the first tip. Oh, alone. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you, this is a funny question I think, but do you believe in life after death and if so is there music wherever we go or our energies go? What a cool question. <laughs> um, I don't know what it is it's funny when people are so certain about life after death <laughs> i'm like how do you know how do they know <laughs> yeah <laughs> i can't i can't say i'm certain about it so the next song i said after a breakup and i heard you say that you were inspired by a car ride and a friend that you were talking to um and it's about the habits that we also develop after a relationship is over Oh, is it the new song? Yeah. New window. Oh, cool. Yeah. And I feel like in your music you talk about the whole like human palette of emotions, like love, pain, but also loss and all of that. Which of these emotions would you say is the most inspiring for you to, to write music to? Mm. I mean, I think pain is, is much easier to work with 
then it's one of those expressions where you know people say that they don't pray when they're happy you know they like <laughs> pray when they need something or things are really bad and I think songwriting can be similar <laughs> it's so hard to be like everything's great and fine and I'm <laughs> totally happy like yeah. it doesn't make for as good of a song sometimes True. and I think in the past I've definitely tried to turn my pain into art to, mm. as a process of healing and alchemical transformation. And that's something that I think is really powerful that art can do is give people kind of a, a tool to process their feelings that's healthy and you can kind of turn something bad into something good mm. in this magical process. And yeah. so that's, that's definitely been a pretty mm. strong thread through my work is yeah. <laughs> negotiating difficult uh, kind of dissonant feelings. That's wonderful. I think the the fact that you, you turn something that's pain into something so beautiful that other people can listen to and relate to is really beautiful. I look for the